Hello dear listeners, dear viewers, my name is John Konzimova, your host for today's special on Healing Sound Movement Radio and Television and also World Peace Child Television. And we have a very special guest and I'm quite honored, in fact, because we already spoke a little bit on radio. Hello, Akiane. Akiane Kromerik, is that, is that correct? Yes, you actually said it quite well. Thank yes, you. <laughs> I, pr I practice in Dutch. So I don't think I can say that well. <laughs> okay. And your website is, uh, for the, the viewers also, artsakiane.com and that's also akiane.com and akiane.nl and we are here in Centrum de Roos, um, who is one of the um, partners who's organizing an event with you together with Heart Events, if I'm correct. And that's this weekend on, I believe, the 17th and the 18th, am I correct? Saturday and Sunday, okay. So, um, my first question, how was your day? Because it was quite a busy day, I think. It was, and I uh, was honored to be a part of um, this magazines and had a photo shoot and be a part of a, this, um, this, te this television show, and this actually this action documentary about um, how we have to follow your hearts and by doing that it will be a brighter future and I spoke a little bit about that and I was just very honored to be a part of that and because I, fe I feel so much for that as well and, uh, and here I am speaking with, with you and it's just, I love sharing my message and I at the same time, and when people ask me, well, why go in public? Why share your message now? Why now? And I, um, I answer them simply, actually. It's, it's actually, that is my, my crisis as well. It is, if I had a choice, I would be behind the curtain and be behind and, and, and paint without nobody watching and kind of be in my own little, little corner. But going into the public view and the media, it is a challenge for me as well because it's something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it's something that's my mission that I have inside myself, that I made a commitment saying, you know, this is, I just have to do this because I want people to, I want people to know the message and to be themselves and to be inspired and be creative and, and just to be to be who they are, where they meant to be. And, and what, what is the message and when did you find it and how did you find it? Well, I, I've had this message and this goal since I was three and a half, four years old and it, it kept building each day when my, my brain started opening up and started expanding, my, the whole meaning started expanding. The message is, is actually just quite simple, it's actually going for to what we're supposed to be and, and what we're created to be. And if we go off the wrong track, the wrong uh, step to the side or the back, we would physically get hurt. We'll mentally get hurt and, and spiritually get hurt. We have to be who we are meant to be, or, el or else it's not. It's uh, not going to be good for you, for you, for yourself, and for, for for your soul. And also, just I would love to unite people unite people with their with, with my iron poetry because mm. everybody is one after all you just have to you just have to realize that so you think we have built in correction mechanisms connected to the soul because I thought it was interesting what you just uh, told us that if you do not follow the central course you are supposed to follow something will happen that will attract pain instead of exactly flowing experience and it will just uh, be uh, um, is a complete distraction and yes if if for example if you're supposed to be an architect but you know that's your strength you know that it is but you always wanted to be an actress or or an actor or a writer and if you're gonna go to that area yes you probably might succeed and very well but at the end you probably won't be happy you probably are thinking in the back of your brain I'm missing something Something is not right. Yes, you have probably the fortune and, and the money and you know the house, the friends, and and but at the same time you'll always be thinking that something's missing, something's not right. But if you actually go to the, what you're supposed to be, it will naturally come. The money will naturally come to you, and the family will actually come closer to you. Your friends will come, and it'll be a puzzle that's meant to be put. And that's what I—that's what I believe that we're supposed to do. 
So that's why I, uh, it didn't work when I tried to become an actress and a painter <laughs> and an architect. At least now I know my path. Okay. No. <laughs> well, we're all meant to do something special. I think that we're all special in our own way. Just we just need to to click into it. And I think we need to. Yes, ex experimenting is great for some people, but at the same time, there are. You, you can actually find what you're supposed to do in less than a couple minutes, really. If you actually ask the right questions, you can actually find out for yourself what you're supposed to be. You can answer, you have to answer your own questions. How do you know they're the right questions? Because it, it worked. It worked for hundreds of people that, and I believe in. It's very, it's actually the questions that me, that we we found out are are actually questions that no one has ever asked before, and it's it's very it's actually simple simple questions it's not complicated, mm -hmm. but it's just those those different questions that will actually make you think for yourself and make you realize what you're where you're supposed to be. It's quite simple actually. Is it possible because you have this amazing gift? No, it's not Oprah. I joked about that. <laughs> she met Oprah when she did not know Oprah, but this is not Oprah, okay? <laughs> but it's an amazing painting and uh, I just bought this book today. Yes, more royalties coming in. Oh. I just bought it because I had no time to, to look for the publisher. It's, by the way, the same publisher who published my book, I believe. Oh, great! But uh, it's amazing. I didn't have time to look at it, but of course we did our radio show already. But your art is so amazing and I know you probably told this story for a lot of people but can you tell our general listeners and viewers uh, what happened around when you were four I believe, what happened with uh, communicating with God, how, how, how did this all start, this gift so to speak? Well, well my, my story actually begins with a, an, an unusual underwater home birth. Yes. And I was actually quite happy baby and I was always very curious and wondersome and but um, I was actually constantly sick from severe pesticide poisoning and my dad too, my dad too got seriously ill and uh, it actually made my um, my mom compelled to start a home business and at the time I she had she has three kids and mm -hmm. I, you know I had two older brothers and you know it was it was a miracle when she, her her business became so so successful and we were able to buy um, this 10,000 square foot mansion but before that we had no money we actually had uh, no friends we I, uh, I was born in a shack on the edge of a cornfield uh, we we had, you know, <laughs> we had no television we had no books and when we went to that, well, actually, we just had each other, really. We had only our family. and that's So you had everything, but... But, you know, when we actually went into yeah. that house, into that, to that mansion, that's actually how it, where, where all the story begins. Mm -hmm. I still, well, of course, I still didn't have any friends. I, I still was with my brothers. And I just started seeing these snapshots and seeing these colors forming in the distance. I start seeing faces pop and I, I often went in and out of, uh, of existence and reality. I was four at the time, four and a half. And I went to the point where uh, I never told my parents about this and nobody about this. I kept it to myself. And it came went to the point where I started having visions, intense visions where the my experiences were so vivid, so real, that I did, didn't distinguish reality and and, and, and the heavenly um, life anymore. It was so blended that I got so confused that there's some times that my mom, when she was singing to me, uh, lollipies, and she has a beautiful voice, but when I started seeing these visions and comparing the voices, the voices and the notes from the uh, unearthly music mm -hmm. and the earthly music. I music started, from the spheres. I started crying and crying, and I it was screeching my ears or something like, 
roaring and chalk on the blackboard. It was this mixture of this un uneasy, comfortable uh, noise. Mm -hmm. And there were times where it was just, it was, I felt exhausted between the two worlds. And uh, it went to the, and there was actually a time where I, my whole body lifted up and I, it was just my whole body disintegrated into millions of pieces and these pieces were like miniature me's and they all went into different uni different doors and they experienced different events and different so you had a lot of friends then probably thousands of you <laughs> no, please go please go on. No, that, that's a good yeah. way of saying it yeah. <laughs> but they all experiencing different events in, in, in yeah. lives but at the same time right? at the same time yes but in actuality on earth it was I was missing physically for six, seven hours. And my parents called the police and there were twenty literally twenty police cars in in our front in, in our driveway. More friends. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> friends. But there's dogs there, they all searched and they uh, reported me as uh, being kidnapped and they went all over the town and they couldn't they couldn't find me. But in the meantime, my, my, my big source was actually having a view from above and seeing myself looking and seeing all the policemen going walking, seeing my mom crying in the corner with my dad, seeing my brothers hiding and, and walking behind the bushes. I saw everything as if from a cloud. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was just that, that gut feeling that it was time to go. And all my pieces came together as one, and I saw this, this being, this, this, not this being, it's kind of this energy field that was all white and bright, and these, these eyes just kept staring. And was it a light or was it a form, a structure? It was more of a similar, of a, a little bit of a head form, but the rest was a blur. It mm. was more of that foggy look. And the eyes that looked at me were were so large but at the same time you saw everything else all the little universes all the little creatures and every path and every um, event that happened the past the future that's happening in the eyes the colors the sparkles the crystals that were popping there's just something it was something that i really cannot explain with words is some people might say you saw infinite consciousness, but in a way you probably yes. saw God, right? Yes, and that's when I started calling hey God. And when I came down to um, the, the physical being, I was so exhausted, I was about to faint. It was that, that exhaustion of, um, of incomplete mission that I have to do right away. And it was something that I was so eager but it just drained me physically, and I was five and a half at the time. And I went to my mom, and I was I was walking through the halls, and I saw my my mom crying. And then she looked at me, and she just couldn't believe her eyes. And she looked at me twice, and she ran to me with just gushing gushing eyes. And I, she asked me a question, you know course you know where have you been where, where did you go what happened so in 3d reality you were lost for many hours yes, okay. yes I was yes and she she when she asked me this question I looked at her and I said I'm so tired mom I'm exhausted I have so much to do but um, you're not ready yet I'm not I'm not saying anything now you're just you're not ready and but this experience was just the beginning of what happened. This was actually just that start, that pulsating start, that and that running start mm. of what my whole life was about to unveil. And uh, since then, I so wanted to, to show to my parents what I was seeing, so I just started to draw them because it was that I needed that physical matter. There were no words to explain. There was experience. no words and you exactly, were and, and, years, and yes. I. Five and a half year old no, girl, no. you can, all you you can only say so much in your vocabulary. Yes, I was drawing, and I was seeing those snapshots when I was four, and I started drawing a little bit. But the five and a half was an intense, intense time where I really, really started drawing. And if I didn't have drawings, I used to take toothpaste, 
wrote it on the walls. I used to take tomatoes, carrots, and I used to put it in pieces and drawing. And I, pencils I used, charcoal, makeup, my mom's makeup. <laughs> Where did my makeup go? Exactly. Is she already on this stuff now? <laughs> you know she is, but with a different purpose. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But you know that that was just the only. That was a proof that to my to my mom that there was something there in me and. She was that person that jumped up from her seat and started giving her all to me, giving all the materials that I needed, the support that I needed, anything that I needed. I didn't go to the school at the time. I was she gave, she gave us she gave us kids that freedom of be who you want to be. Well, if my children would ask me, I want to do this, I want to do this, I always said no. Of course. <laughs> but if I, as a parent, would have. A child with this experience, I think it would reinforce the idea that it might be a good idea to facilitate this, right? <laughs> that would, but it's it's actually very important, in my belief, is to yes, give that freedom, but not too much, but not too little. The both of them are are very um, not not a good way. They're very uh, you have to them negative, out. and I think you just have to have that right freedom, that right balance. And not, not absolutely not neg negative criticism. I think that would just crush you and put you down. You have to have that positive criticism, that suggestion, that opinion, that encouraging. And uh, I think that was that played a huge role in my life, where my my family was that support, that that lean, that that shoulder to lean on. And I, like I said, I'm so. I, I didn't, I'm so blessed to be in that family. I, in actuality, I chose my family before I came here, mm. and I share that with my parents as well. Well, I think you made a very important point because you are gifted, and I believe I have to, I have to look where I wrote it down because I think this is interesting. There's this comment from Fox Magazine. Yes, yes Fox Magazine. Come on, to say that Akiane has extraordinary talent is a gross understatement. She is a young genius and a spiritual young lady with an amazing gift who's changing the lives of all who are in contact with her. Now, you probably changed my life as well then because we are in contact. But this is of course an amazing compliment and you have a special gift. But at the same time, I joked, I'm gonna to talk to this 2,000 year old woman <laughs> in the body of a 16 year old adult. <laughs> but I, I feel that is really uh, the truth. But you said some important thing here because you're not showing the children of the world be like me and be gifted no. because yes you are telling them to be gifted but for their own talent and their own potential because in a way and their own you strengths. are saying yes. yes and also a message to the parents we do world peace child we talked about this and i love it that you are saying please facilitate help them out correct them if needed but yes. correct them by um, in a way reinforcing their uh, creative gifts, right? Exactly, and every everybody has their weakness. Everybody has their strengths, and especially especially during the children between five and thirteen, is a huge huge impact on their lives. If you don't, if you make the wrong move, you'll remember for the rest of your life. It's lives. less flexible than later life. Exactly. So you have to be careful of how you treat the child, especially especially at a young age. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yes, there are there are some some kids that are very very gifted in in reading and studying. That's that's great. That's a, that's an extraordinary strength. But there are many people who just don't need don't need reading. Don't need even writing. They just could sculpt. How much they want or create music how much they want yeah but it's so very important for the parents to understand the option of that they should understand that there is a possibility of not pressuring them with rules and 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 what the society wants to for them to look like to become instead to of to become, be exactly the reputation i mean there's high expectations for everyone to be a doctor a lawyer Yes, there's there's extraordinary. Um, I love doc. I wanted to be a doctor as mm -hmm. well, but that's that's another field I want to. I think you became in. a doctor in the end because you're healing <laughs> the world well, through that's, art. That's that's my mission as well. Mm -hmm. But it, like I said, it's the parents should know when to stop 
put pressuring them and start and the, and start gently positively pushing them and challenging them I think the kids need the challenge I think that's what makes life I think they need that adventure they, they need it they just have to know the child I every child's different they have their capacities they have their their weaknesses and their strength they, parents that's their job I think that's so important and um, if, like I said if they don't do it now then it'll be Sally will be a little bit too late mm -hmm. and when they become, become a li little more older. But of course it could be anything when you're old. Of course you could go into art when you're 19 or, or 30 or 50 or, or whichever. Mm -hmm. But it's very important to go more younger and start younger for them to be more happier. Yes. Talking about art, we talked about this on our radio show. This is uh, our music from Healing Sound Movement and also, uh, where's the other album? Uh, this one. You have almost have the whole collection, but there's more. But this is, uh, I'll show it so people know what we're going to do. This is our World Peace Child project with the oh song Prayer for the Children. This yes, is my gift. Yes. yes, the one I send you. And uh, oh my gosh. we have some news because I said it to you on the radio show and now I'm going to uh, not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. We are going to do a music project together and all income, whatever that is, one euro or six million, it doesn't matter, will go to World Peace Child and the project you are supporting for the children. So that's, what, that's the main thing I want to do. Like I said, I, I'll keep my promise. I want to facilitate your other talent, your new face maybe, with music and also want to talk to you about that because um, I think the message would be for the children and it's an important um, message to convey, of course. So. Oh my gosh. Because sound is a carrier wave of consciousness, that's what I'm saying in my sound science work. So if that is, well, this message is so important and we could reach a lot of people, a lot of children, parents, through music. music and let's talk about it because mu music is the soul is our essence and everybody can relate to it and everybody, from anybody yes. generations from any race religion background we all have our specific little taste of music that we all can relate it's to. our universal language exactly yes exactly so what happened because I saw this video I saw your poetry amazing your art your painting amazing when you were four already the drawings amazing but then there was this girl, this 2,000 year old woman, <laughs> who started, and I was like, is she playing the piano? And, oh, okay, she can play the piano, cool, okay, that was quite, quite good. And then in that video, they actually said that, I believe you were 12, you just played it within one month, as, you, as, yes. as if it's a new thing you just wanted to try out, and yes. there, there we go. Exactly, actually, it's something that I think Yes, I, I, I was. I, I experimented with a little bit of piano when I was seven years old, but I just it was just not that time yet. I think it was just that when I was twelve. I think it was just that 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 spark. I think it was, and um, I had a, just a couple months going a, a little tutoring just of a technical work in theory and going in without knowing a note, mm -hmm. and I just said, okay, that's it. I don't need any more. I Yes, I know a little bit of the technical stuff, but I wanted something more. I wanted something that is different. Mm -hmm. And I always will remember this when my mom said, she says that, yes, uh, many people, actually any pe any person could um, sit down on the piano and, and learn a piece, but very few can create. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to... You like challenges. I love you? challenges. Mm -hmm. That's what makes life interesting. Yes. And actually, by challenging myself, I actually fell in love with it. Actually, it wasn't even a challenge. It was more that natural flow that came through me. And yes, of course, there are some little nudges and little, you know, bl blurbs. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's something that you just cannot explain. It's just that, that connection, that, um, that oxygen that you can't breathe without. Yes. Well, I never learned a note, still, and I produce many albums, and that's there why... There you go! See, I'm a living example of just use this and exactly. this. 
and this, but especially this, and uh, maybe also be a subconscious channel of information. Uh, I know how that works for you. So uh, that's my invitation to do our album together and use my studio for free to get that art out. So that's. Uh, you are a blessing. Now I have to keep that promise, folks. <laughs> it's on camera. We won't cut this. <laughs> So. Oh my goodness, this is what I've ever, ever asked for. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now um, let's go. Because otherwise, we'll be blushing here. But oh my the camera guy is laughing. So the camera guy is, is laughing because that was his joke at the beginning. You have to blush more for the light. But well, now we're doing it. So he I will, can take my blush off of yeah, you. <laughs> we will have perfect light. And you still need to do this for my nose. But anyway, <laughs> um, talking about that experience you've had as a, a little child was a little child in this case, but when you were four years old. Um, that reminded me of, uh, we also do Healing Sound Movement events, and uh, Professor Dr. Raymond Moody is coming to Amsterdam. And I just read his work again, because I wrote an article the last few days. And the amazing thing is, the thing you are uh, describing, that experience, actually looks a lot like Raymond Moody and all the people who had a near-death experience, or an out-of-body experience, yeah. have experience so I'm not sure if you're of course in this field of research or you know these yes. people but it is really like an out-of-body experience or a near-death experience yes yeah, actually I've, I've heard actually countless of stories that people keep telling me that yep. wow this is this sounds like my friend's story about about the out-of-body uh, out ex experience, experience. Yeah. Yep. and yes I've, I've, I've not, not done a whole lot of research but I've done seen a, a whole lot of a uh, documentaries about this yeah. but it's it is quite similar it is quite similar but you know the interesting thing is is just I my experience is something that was not deathly and not not something that's mm. I didn't go into that state where I almost died but it was something that I could go naturally in and out yeah. where it was that like um, astral traveling this yeah place. exactly exactly you had a near life experience that's nice. I love that. That's nice. A near life experience. And uh, it's it was more that um, that positive, positive uh, uplifting. Was it bliss? Did you miss the experience right away? Like some people who had a near death experience, for instance, they have to go back in their bodies. They're probably not finished yet in this life. They need to do something like your yes. task, maybe. But they felt melancholic and sad because. It was painful to get back in the body, exactly. and they missed that bliss, that heavenly experience. Yes. But then again, your gift is that you can connect to it while alive. You don't need to die to have this experience and miss it while you're back in the body. You, but do you need something to make contact with the higher realms or with God, or do you just sit down and it comes to you? Do you need to focus on something before you work? You know, this is this is a question that. Is a bit, is, it has multiple answers to. Yes, there are there are moments where there are just complete beauty, that infinite beauty, that the songs, the the, the taste of the flowers, the, the taste of the air, the scent, the, everything that is just packaged so perfectly that when you, of course, when you come down to your your physical self, it's such a a weight of burden on you. Mm -hmm. And yes, those I had those moments, but there are moments where I did not see um, bliss. I actually saw what the real person was actually feeling across the world. I actually, many times, I felt my body being in, in a different person's body, um, mm. experiencing pain, experiencing being surrounded by gangs and being uh, tortured, being. There's many times where I was swimming across the ocean and I felt, I felt, I really, really felt the person's breathing and the person's pulsing the heart. So in a way you felt oneness, you were connected. I, it was a whole lot of experiences like this and um, it's not just that that blissfulness, it was actually reality as well mm -hmm. and other... All kind of emotions. All kind of emotions and actually other worlds reality. And there are many other worlds that the feelings are opposite of what they have. And I experienced that that kind of otherworldly feelings. It's it's a combination of everything and that's what 
How do the Maybe other worlds? It. How do the other worlds emotions differ from the ones we can experience here? Are they the same or, or quite different? There's actually some some places where there was no, there was no uh, peace. There was no of that um, that tender moments. There was no actually sometimes there was no eagerness or love there. It was more different, completely opposite emotions. Some of them were no hate and and but very. Uh, restlessness. It was this these different emotions that are not existent at all, or completely opposite. That don't even have a name. That here on earth, mean. exactly, yes. exactly. Okay. So it's just a combination of everything. And I, and as I grow older, honestly, all the more of the experiences and all the visions are a little bit more fading. And there was actually a time where I went through complete blackout, kind of a complete shutdown of my memories at all. It was when I was 11 to 13 years old or 14, where I couldn't remember anything. But somehow all these these images kept flowing through me and kept coming out of me like, like water out mm. of a jug. And even now, I'm starting, I'm starting to remember, I'm starting to remember back all my memories. It's just, it'll, just, it'll take time, and I, I know it will. It's something that, yes, it is a blessing to have those memories. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm very thankful for that experience. But at the same time, I could, without those visions and those dreams, somehow it naturally just comes out of me. And I know that, I guess, I know it in the future, I will start having more experiences and I can't wait for that moment. I had a strange experience. I thought there was a dog in here. Did you see it? Uh, yeah, it wasn't black. Wow, I'm not sure. I, I think it's gone now, so I I'm, don't not know. Sure. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I just felt something run around me. <laughs> yeah, probably not a dimension coming here as a holographic reality, but uh, let's, uh, let's skip that part. Okay, um, talking about your beautiful art, your paintings, um, were you conscious of the elements that you needed to paint? Because I thought it was interesting. If you did not paint them, there would, they would even wash there would, out. Yeah, yes. So there's a, like an important kind of uh, yeah. stimulus. Paint yes. them because you have to, right? But yes. did that process change? And were you conscious of the elements it contained? So did you know what you were painting, or did you feel, especially when you were very, very young? as an unconscious channel, just downloading information from God or the higher realms or whatever. Yes, actually when I was younger, that that's exactly what happened is it was just that full image, I put it on the, on the paper. And I was a perfectionist and I'm, I'm thinking I'm still am. If I didn't like it, I actually was just crumbling and throwing in the trash can until I get it right. But Don't do that with the city, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. But, you know, Actually, the, all those drawings and the trash cans, my mom went and, and saved everyone, and those the only ones Straight, that were left. Straightened it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, but as I'm, I'm growing older, from six to, to ten years old, it started getting a little bit more challenging for me. And I think God was actually, in the beginning, was just an introduction. It was an introduction of the world and different worlds. But now, I think that He, he was more. Of, um, challenging me as a spiritual being, um, and as a person, as a uh, conscious, uh, as a conscious being, to think for myself and challenge myself. Like an unfolding game plan? Exactly, and I think that us as humans, I think it's very important not to, not to get the full information. I think what this life is all about is actually piecing the puzzles together and creating that movie effect, that, that kind of that, that adventure in all of us in our, in our hearts. If we all know the answer right away, then what, why is this earth? Why are, why are we here? Like Plato is saying, the philosopher, and you don't have to know this because I don't, I don't know, know his books. <laughs> I know just this sentence that I believe we have to drink of the river of for, forgetness. What was it? Forgetfulness. We, forgetfulness. We, yes, yeah. we, we forget every impression we have because we need to be carte blanche to yeah. experience this life again. Absolutely. And right, right now, as, well, as I'm painting right now, yes, I have an idea for my visions and I have an idea for my dreams. But it's not just those dreams that I'm depending on. I think I'm depending on 
the actually the night the nature the people because the people are as important as the cosmic energy because actually the people are I believe more important there are much larger than we think they are. We are the ones we've been waiting for, like the Hopi prophecies. Perhaps I think that we are. Many, many of us think that oh, we're just so insignificant and mm. so small. But I'm telling you, I think uh, there's much more to life, much more, much more that we still don't know yet. I think that we just have to realize that by working together, uh, I think that we're limitless. So do you think that our co-creation, because that's what we're talking about, yes. and global consciousness and intention principles, if we use this in a peaceful manner, in unity, that we could also change the whole cosmos or it has effects on those other worldly beings as well? It, exactly. I think that we are a representation of the other worlds and I think in other galaxies. And we just have to prove that I truly believe that we all we all chose this life for a reason. We all chose and I, I believe that I, I I believe I chose my, my parents, my family and, and my life. We have all have our specific missions, but at the same time we should do that with with love and unity. But we have to challenge each other. That's is this is an, a really important by challenging each other's a uh, soul's energy and beings is actually building and growing our higher self. I think I think we need to challenge each other now, now and then because it's it's very it's healthy for us but in a a positive gentle way. And I think it's not a cruel, not that torturous way. It will never no, no good will come out of that. You just mentioned your higher self. You think at other worlds, like a multi-dimensional being, we are there at the same time as a different kind of non-physical being. Is that the higher self? That's exactly what I'm saying. And of course, there are many, many other possibilities. There are actually, literally limitless possibilities. Mm -hmm. But what you just said is actually what happened to me when I was, when I disappeared. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's and that's where, um, that's where I painted the painting, the footsteps of eternity, where there's. Uh, there's a girl, um, a young lady on the bottom, there's a young lady on the top where this young lady is actually covering her face and you can feel her whole, um, her whole misery, her whole loss of hope, her whole depression and earthly experience. But her heavenly self from above is kneeling and pouring this liquid hope on her. And there's an earthly self and the heavenly self. As you can see, the, the earthly self has a white background dress with black spots. The white background dress is purity, and the black spots represents our hardship here mm -hmm. on Earth, the, the experience. It's the opposite with the girl, other girl's dress, very earthly experience, black um, background, and the black spots represents the purity footsteps. And I think that we all have our higher selves. And uh, by being the earthly selves, and by being who we are and who we are meant to be, we actually grow our heavenly self. Now this is important because we actually talk about challenges, confrontations, duality. I mean, someone used to say that um, if we keep on going the way we are heading, we might just end up where we are heading. So yes. if we look at the world today, it's going down the drain, but at the same time, Consciousness, spirituality and love as a coherent field is growing. So would you say that these are actually not a, not a world in crisis, but it is, but maybe more a chance of transformation, a chance of creating heaven on earth? Is it possible? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think now more than ever is the time to actually choose. We are in the crossroads of the the future, what is ahead, that many scientists and many um, reporters are reporting and we're, we have a, an option of going back to the past and what we can go back to the past and with, with all their, their history. So we're right now at the crossroad and that's where I am trying to come in and, and show people that Yes, there is 
Yes, there is, of course, there's crisis in the world, financial crisis and, you know, starvation and, and all that, and all that news. But we have to actually go have a bigger picture than this. By solving this, yes, that you should do with love and, and happiness, that's, that's beautiful. But we have to think practical. I think we have to think, what is the first step for each one of us to do? And yes, I could philosophize as much as I want, but people are people. They need practical solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think that by, I know this is going to sound simple, but by, like I said, by focusing on what you love to do, it will mm -hmm. nat we will all naturally unite eventually. We we'll actually will all um, come together as one. And yes, there's probably starvation all over the world and, and, and thirst. But if we all feel connected as one, we actually will start coming to those places and start building better worlds, building better communities and, hmm. and, 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 and towns and cities and not being lazy, sitting around uh, uh, and watching TV all day and, and going and working out on the ships or on the planes or, or just something that in the temples even, by doing what you are supposed to be, we'll all magnetically and scientifically will fit in the right place and will actually become a whole ball, a magnetic ball. And uh, I think that's where it all depends on the people. Well, I wouldn't call this example simple because the ramifications and implica implications of what, what you just is? said is amazing because I have this vision now and you almost inserted it in my brain as a holographic. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm having this image now of, of, for instance, this picture as a puzzle. Yeah. So because we're talking about unity and oneness, but we don't have to be become communists, we don't have a, to have a new world order, we don't have to do the same things, feel the same things, we are all unique. But you're basically saying, if we really, really do what's coming from our hearts, our passion, the, the, the person we have to be in a way, we are all these little parts of that big puzzle. And only then, if we are at the right place at the right time, exactly. it comes together and it's unity, right? It's oneness. Absolutely. And it's, well, it is not easy. It's, it will take time for people to realize this all well, over they the are. world. All over the world. And, and they probably just did not have that person to tell them to do, tell them to open up and be where they are. They just didn't have that right positive push, you know? They probably are very um, out of uh, out of that information center, mm -hmm. and I think that it is going to take time for people to realize this. It's but every step, it's, it's always if you put a step there, it's it'll take a infinite to reach that. Mm -hmm. We have to keep on going and going slowly and slowly. And, I think and do you think the cosmic game plan, if there's any, and uh, the cosmic intelligence, the goal of humanity? Is world peace in the end? Is heaven on earth? I totally believe this, and I think by uh, by placing, I think heaven is everywhere. Hmm. We just have to create our own heaven, and I think we as humans, we have the power to do this. We have that consciousness, that that ability to create, and um, it's it's actually we. We are actually not as vulnerable as we think we are. I think we are much bigger than, much larger than what everybody thinks. What do you mean exactly when you say we are not as vulnerable as we think? We have more intention powers, you mean, or protection, or? I think that. Guidance? We, we I believe that we are a part of God. Mm -hmm. I think we, as a whole, we make God. I think we are a part of. Like I said, w without us, n none of us will exist. It's just, it's a life is just meant to be. And um, I think that when we chose this life, when we chose this earthly experience, we actually chose all the challenges. We chose all, all this. Like a uh, cosmic contract. I, I, that's what, from and my... And drink my, from the river. That's what I believe. But, <laughs> but of course, there's so many all other possibilities that I, 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 I think of as well. But... I think that as a whole, we are a, we're an infinite love, infinite being, infinite power, infinite wisdom, and infinite heart. We have to pulsate together. 
And if we pulsate together, it's nothing can stop. Nothing in, in can stop. In unity. Absolutely. Coherence. Absolutely. Now, I remember I wrote down somewhere, but I don't want to grab that thing. So, um, you said that the most important thing is faith. So, what kind of role has faith played in your life? Not just faith of getting the images yes. or being supported by your family, yes. but also when people attack you or are critical oh, or don't want to be friends. How, how did that shape you and your development? Like I said, faith is as, as important as, as breathing, I think. Because without faith, we will just not live. We, I, I think it's so essential, of course, spiritually as well. And, uh, and physically, actually, when you when you meet a person, you you still have to have that faith of of being comfortable with them, yeah. or you still have have to have faith of being comfortable with your family and people accepting you who you are. And actually, it is actually scientifically proven that if you meet a person, the first 15 seconds, your heart and your gut is actually telling you the exact truth what the person is. I don't want to know what my heart and God is telling me during this <laughs> interview, trust me. So I'll, I'll but, skip to that. But, yeah. but, ab but, but after the 15 seconds, then the reasoning kicks in. Mm -hmm. Then you start talking about, oh, what do you do for the profession? What, what, what's this? How, where, where do you live? And it, the reasons start kicking in and you start judging them automatically. Mm -hmm. And you're, well, it's human judgment. It's our conditioning. It's, it's natural. It's yeah. natural. But what I'm saying is that that gut feeling, that heart feeling, that faith feeling, I think that is so important for for humans to listen listen to your heart as well. And um, I think by ha by having faith in that, by having faith in your heart, and is is extremely important because everything else. It's so insignificant. It's just that has to be trusted. Well, I won't trust my gut feeling right right now because it's making crazy sounds. <laughs> so I hope it's not oh, recording. Rock there. But um, normally, I would say this is our intuition. We have to trust our gut feeling. We literally, do. we do. I think that I, many people always think, you know, the brain. You know, it's it's very it's a very powerful tool, but it's actually the gut that is more powerful than the brain it is and then first it's the heart then mm. the gut then the brain i think the three tools is extremely important but uh it's like i said if you if you want to do something if you want to believe in something if you want to meet someone or be connected with something spiritually listen to your heart and listen to your gut but and everything else will come after that. Well, I did during our radio show and that, then all of a sudden I did my suggestion to make music together and I really hope, and that's my question also for you, I felt, John, this is going to be a lot of work, a lot of efforts, <laughs> but you know what, she has these gifts and amazing talents and the good thing is you have something in common because where is it about patience? Um, this is one of your poems. The longer we hurry patience, not patience from a hospital guys, patience, okay? The longer <laughs> we hurry patience, the longer it takes for us to, to reach it. it. Now, we both are perfectionists and not patient at all. So we, we are going into some confrontation, I guess. But, uh, and here too, the camera guy too, so that's gonna be interesting. But my feeling was, and I got a, a warm feeling in my heart while talking to you, uh, uh, I felt this should go to the children. And I know you, because they are the future of mankind. And someone learned me, John, leave the planet a better place than you found it. Well, I think the planet found me in a way. But anyway, I think the same goes for your mission statement. But can you tell our listeners, our viewers, what you are doing with your success, with your passion to help our children? Because I think that's the amazing, you have a special gift, but you also have the gift to connect to all the children of the world. So that's amazing. And you know, hopefully through my through my art and my poetry, my goal, my ultimate goal is to uh, to inspire them to be who the best they can be and focus on their strengths, not their weakness. At this, in the same time, I would, I would love, I'm 
working with so many charities around the world, um, working with many orphanages and organizations and foundations, and it's just that feeling of helping someone, the feeling of being that shoulder, the feeling of being with an, a bigger person and, and being a comfort to a person is that that ultimate happiness. And I, you feel so good when you help somebody. Real help, yes. Real help, not, not that, not not that fake social the, with the media help. I think it's mm -hmm. that real, genuine help. And um, I always say to every person, only from deep cold tunnels white diamonds shine, and only by the light they are recognized. Ah, you remember I said that on the, during yes. the radio show. Yes, I do love it because that also means that duality and confrontations have in a way their, uh, their function, right? To, to, to develop us spiritually. Yes. yes, and I think that by, by focusing on what we love, we'll naturally be connected to the spiritual, spirituality connection, the portal. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it, it's a proof that I live that. I absolutely live that because I was at a young age, I was very open to options and possibilities but and I was very uh, confident of what what my mission was and I'm and naturally my spirituality grew from that and it, it grew and grew and grew and I think every one of us could do the same and they just like I said the key to that door is uh, is your faith and your your love and your passion mm. and, that, and that door is the spirituality now, what would you say to children or their parents who are saying well Akiana that sounds fine and lovely and heavenly but you know what my child is disabled or yeah. my child is insecure and me as a or maybe the parent is insecure because it's all projections right we have to watch out here with conditioning <laughs> but uh, the father is saying I don't know if my guy has some skills or my little girl can do that you have this amazing gift but I think you're offering false dreams and false hope yeah. I know you're not but what, I heard. what would your answer be to a parent or a child who's thinking mm, this is not for me or this is not for my child well I cannot answer for everybody I cannot and you, don't you, have you, you cannot please a person a hundred a people hundred mm. percent but yes parents need practical solutions and practical answers is well, of course is an infinite but what helped what I believe that the parents should do is actually ask the children questions, unique questions. What do you need? Yes, and I think that it's time for the parents to listen. I think it's time for them to not pressure them as much as society wants them to. I think it's, it's ask them questions like, this is, uh, I think it's, it's, these questions can actually do for all of us as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll give you an example. If there is, if there is a waves and you're by the ocean, and you have to, all your creation that you create in one day, the next day all that wave will wash everything away and your memory is gone. Like a mandala for Tibetan exactly. Buddhism. Exactly. Every day, what would you do mm -hmm. if the next day all your creation, all your your physical matter is gone? How? What? What would you do that you won't feel? Ugh. You will feel, okay, let's start another time. Let's do it again. That, that endless passion. Another question is, what would you do for a million years? What would you do for, if you had unlimited power, what was that power that we, what would you be? And another question is, if you were invisible, what would you do? If nobody never saw you, you know, what would you do? Mm. And the, when people ask, and there's multiple other qu questions, but mm. When a person answers, for example, what would you be if you were invisible? Mm -hmm. The typical answer would be, oh, I would like to go in and scare people. I mean, you have fun with that. But or go to a shop and buy new clothes. Exactly. Yeah. But at the end of the session, they start saying, they start realizing and answering their own questions, literally, mm -hmm. and saying, thinking, well, if I would somehow always always at the end of the whole conversation it's always helping somebody or is it helping the environment 
or an animal or helping somebody or helping even the plants and I'm telling you it, by contributing mm -hmm. I think it's it will help us all by doing that I think you mean by answering those questions most people will find their answer get yeah. the aim, but also that we can have everything but that's quite boring. The only thing that really fulfilled me is a loving feeling, right? Absolutely. Helping out. Yes, and there's questions, if you had a million dollars, what would you? If you had a trillion, if, if the money didn't even exist, and you mm. were the wealthiest person in the whole universe, what would, it's just, what would you do? You have to ask these questions to the child, because all they're focused on and all they're programmed is, is actually reaching that salary and reaching that, that reputation and that um, what their parents want them to be to become instead to of become to be and to have a better job and have they think by having a better job they'll have a better life at the end of all the school and all the work I think they'll I believe they'll become more unhappier I think now this is important do you think and I, I think you know the answer and I think I know your answer as well but I want to ask the question anyway <laughs> Do you think that we need to change social structures, uh, society, education, or, yes, you can nod it in after this one, or do we need to change the conditioning we put down on our children? Do we need to facilitate the children to actually show what kind of society? So, so what do, should we do uh, first? We need to change schooling, education, or choose a program that helps children actually manifesting what they want in society. I, what would be the best? I would nod to every one of them, but <laughs> but the practical way of thinking is is it will take years, years and years and years to change the situation that's happening right now in the world, the educational system and the whole way of life. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a long time to change that, and by t taking baby steps like ch changing the teachers literally baby steps yeah. literally baby mm. steps is actually yes they'll be have a not such a good curriculum but it's actually the teachers that make a huge impact on the children they should if the teachers are so not where they're supposed to be and not what not their field and they treat children like robots the children, their their children's whole life will they will remember it and they'll actually they're actually being destroyed. I think by having a positive and most uplifting teacher and a not such a good curriculum is is more helpful for the child's health than having a great curriculum, a great uh, education, and a bad teacher. If there is no teacher, you have to be that great parent. By encouraging mm. parents as a role model as yeah. a role model yes we could have everything we want the luxury the the beautiful freedom of education of whatever you want but if you have that bad support the bad influence like what you see every day like your parents the teachers your role models so-called role models mm. if you have that horrible influence that you see every day that it's gonna it's gonna get to you but I, I nod to all the things that you say. Yes, we have to take baby steps, but that's one of the baby steps. And I think it will start with the educational system and hopefully that people will realize that we, we need to start looking at the brighter future and a brighter package, not focusing on the financial part mm -hmm. and the, the, the pride part. part. The ego part. As exactly. Well. Yeah, talking about role models, I think we have to focus on the role and change that role, and not the model. <laughs> Don't change the, the game, but change exactly, the player, so exactly. to speak. But, uh, so uh, that role. Uh, what's your next step, your baby step, in your mission? What's, what's, how does it, I think the future does look bright for you, but <laughs> what's the thing you uh, want to do? We talked about music, we talked about art, about uh, poetry. Is there something else you feel? I do want to do experience this kind of experience. You know, um, I'm at this point where I'm I'm very open to whatever happens, but of course I have goals and I have missions, and of course there's always, always, always going to be a side of me that's always going to be um, helping children and and organizing uh, orphanages and, and charities, 
and there's another side, another part of me, you know, going traveling around the world, experiencing different cultures and painting them and uh, writing books, music, uh, painting. <laughs> but there's actually one thing that I I got to achieve before accountancy. I got <laughs> I knew it. How did you know? <laughs> Something in your eyes and not. Numbers are not my yes. and not my strength sadly. <laughs> <laughs> no mathematics for me. <laughs> <laughs> but what I got to achieve before I I made a I made a promise to myself before I'm I'm 25. I want to achieve um, and build a school where it's a it's an art school and a hands-on school where where kids of all ages could go and actually be who they meant to be and get down and dirty and feel that that earth and that hands-on crafts. Um, it could music is going to be there, acting is going to be there, a uh, filming arts. Uh, even cooking and if it's cooking if you want to be a chef you have to go and I, I believe my, my whole way of, of eco and that whole way of, of my system is go and planting that garden planting your own vegetables having your own farm and and, and, and maintaining that you know may, seeing how the whole milk and the dairy is, is made is and it goes from that to you know art going and mixing your own pigments for the paints. You have to find and be created with your own models. And see, I have, I have that, that idea of that whole village, that whole, it doesn't even have to be a, 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 a huge community. It could be a, mm -hmm. even the most smallest, smallest Yeah, we can do it on a local level, level, right? It's yeah. small, it could be 20 people at least. But it's just that, that message, that little, uh, community, a little family. Like an eco-sustainability project. Exactly. Eco well, I know an architect is also a camera guy, by I the way. I think I w saw it. www.asking.nl, am I right? <laughs> what the hell? It's in between promotion here. He's but, between uh, my eye right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have, a, we have an eco-village going on with the three of us, but we need more people to save her, of course. <laughs> So, uh, so that's your next thing, and uh, you're also um, here in Holland right now. So next weekend yes. is the is uh, the conference. There's also a video, I believe, and after which people can ask questions. Can you tell some more about what's going on this weekend? Well, it's more of a more of an intimacy amongst the people. Where I want, I love that intimate groups. I want to answer the questions from the people. I mm. want to. The best I can, I'll, I'll answer the best I can. Mm -hmm. But of course, I could always do a presentation of of how my life began and, and how it just it all started and encouraging words. But it's, I think I want to do much more than that. I want to go down to what they really want to seek, and hopefully, um, my experience could give them a, a different way of thinking and different way of uh, suggestions and options and hope. And hopefully He's that healer again I'm seeing here. <laughs> you want to change consciousness, not yes. change by manipulating consciousness, exactly. but helping out by people helping themselves out. Absolutely, and I think that's, that is so important, is that we need to start by help. When people say, it's actually a very common saying, by, you cannot start helping people, but you have to start helping people by helping yourself first. And I think by searching in and, and being... Uh, with love in yourself and being happy and being that joyous spirit everybody else will follow everybody else will have, be that magnet to that mm. happiness let's talk about happiness because it seems like quite a complex topic but in a way when you have it i know you have it i know i have it at least for the biggest part <laughs> with my family and i know that's real love that's real happiness and there's a child's coming so I hope they didn't text me because otherwise we have to cut this video now. but anyway um, so that's genuine and I can feel that's real happiness but I've met people and I couldn't even grasp the concept of them not understanding how you can be happy of course if you just got fired or your wife left you okay that's painful and we all know how that feels well at yes. least when you've had that experience but not being happy most of the time, I cannot understand that because there's a lot of joy, a lot of play. There's even nice things on the television sometimes. <laughs> so, 
Can you understand, or did you meet people who are saying, you know, what, and, and not even real, truly depressed or psychiatric patients, but I mean, just people. That loss of hope. Yeah, that lost hope and faith. What would your answer be to get them back to at least warm their hearts again and have a happy feeling? Have friends. Great, I think that, or be acquainted with people who lift you up. And even if it's just, even if it's as simple as just moving to a different country or a different state or or anywhere, you have to have that, those people that will uplift you every day. And I, I'm literally, literally a living proof because every day if I did not have my family behind me, I would be very closed in and very in my shell and I didn't, very saddened. But I think by them being that, my dad being that and my mom being that joyous spirit, that uplifting spirit, it just keeps my hopes up. You have to have that person always on your, you know, keep you on your toes, mm. an exciting and adventuresome life. And, and, and that spirit, you, I believe laughter is the best medicine in the world. I think that... That's why we laughed at the beginning. So you know. <laughs> I think by having a person making you laugh and, and that you have to have those people and I think the by searching for those people and or divine intervention it will just I think that's probably will be the start well I think God sent you out on, on his mission as well because that's what I call divine intervention as well you actually do uplift people so I feel honored and uh, and proud that you're here and you're going to do uh, touch a lot of people's hearts this weekend and I believe maybe you can talk to our listeners as, about this as well there's a tour going on there's, there's other countries you're going to visit right yes absolutely and I'm 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 so excited to some hopefully going to Spain go to Italy um, I'm looking Please at give me those cities before yes, they, I, uh, they will drop at the end of the interview you agree yeah? I probably so, probably okay. <laughs> I'll keep it safe for you yes okay. I'm looking forward to, to going to Russia um, there's France, oh, there's so many things I want to see, Australia, um, South America, Africa, anything you think of. Um, I'm very open, I'm a, very that travelsome spirit. I love traveling, my parents, not so much, mm -hmm. but I love meeting those cultures and people and hopefully um, I will pick up some people around the world and meet them and I think the uh, Yes, I, I don't know, my the, the whole dates are not exact, but the ideas are there. We're still in talk with some people and it's a building It's a building tour, it's a yes. building um, project. And people can read about it on artakiane.com? Yes, yes, and okay. if so, then I'll post it on my blog or or on the events. Okay. And uh, you have uh, you talked about, well, I saw this book, uh, Akiana, Haar Leven, Kunst and Poesie, and yes, it's the same publisher of my book called Blueprint, uh, Anke Hermes, but it's also available in English, of course, and maybe other languages. But I know you have a second book. Are there any, any more? Can you t t tell yes. the titles? Too? I'm actually, um, I published my second book when I was 11 years old, and it's Akiana, Memories of Tomorrow. Yes. And it's a poetry book um, from 7 to 12 years old. And then I'm working on my third book, from the more recent artworks and okay. more recent poetry and what happened uh, from the second book and little later event, you know, latest events. And uh, it's it's an ongoing project and I'm, I'm very quite excited what's what's gonna unveil. And I'm, uh, I'm on, actually on board with my younger brother who has um, pub published his first book and he's gonna publish his second book as is that well. Ilya, or is that Ilya? Ilya, Ilya yes. exactly, and he is uh, yes. considered the youngest philosopher in the world, um, and published his book at the age of six, of quantum philosophy and, and poetry and, and, and uh, abstract art. And am I right? His website is iliapoetry.com. Yes, it okay. is, and I'm I'm on board with him, and I'm gonna help him as much as I can, and and be that. Hopefully, be that supportive sister as as much uh, with um, the best energy as, as I can. Well, I thought it was an amazing synchronicity that 
Len Horowitz, I, uh, as I told I you, I interviewed him for uh, Healing Sound Movement Radio and I talked to him twice uh, about his, uh, his important work and also his new book about Law 528 yes, yes, Frequencies. Yes. And then I saw this comment that he met your little brother and he was like, a, he was flabbergasted because he thought this is the youngest Buddha or this <laughs> kind of figure. So that was, uh, so there's another uh, divine yes. channeling coming from the, from the heaven, so to speak, in the family. Oh, he's, he's very different. He can't read or write, but yet mm -hmm. he has his book published. And, but like I say, he's an inspiration to me every day. Yeah. I think we all should be when we have our brothers and sisters. I think we all should get inspired. Yeah. Some point. Well, you have certainly inspired me, and I already told you during the radio show, God loves you, and so do we. So thank you for your time and for your efforts to make a better world, to leave the world a better place than you found it. So it was thank a you. pleasure, and I, I'm so excited what the world will bring, and hopefully in the future we'll we'll meet again and. Don't well, stop loving. Don't well, talking about other. meeting again, yeah. your father basically said when I said, you know what, it's very convenient if she has something, I could work it further in my studio for our <laughs> collaboration music album. And I said, because it's not very convenient to come to my studio in Amsterdam because she doesn't live nearby. And but of course, she's more than welcome to come 10 times a year. And he <laughs> said, and I'll quote him, well, John, she might take you up on that because we are staying in Europe for, for one uh, or two yes, years. Yes, yes. So at least you know you are welcome to come to Absolutely. Live with us. Absolutely, we're going to stay here for. We're actually free, so we're kind of going with an open heart, and somehow the door's always open, and yes. I'm, I'm very thrilled to be to be in, and I accept. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you for our great talk, and we'll see each other this weekend. Have a great weekend. I'm John Konsumulder for Healing Sound Movement and World Peace Child TV, and I want to thank Akiane for this great and loving talk, and I will finish this talk with a hug. I think we deserved Aww. it. <laughs>